Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Satera by Fat Board Games. This is a two to four player asymmetric style board game that takes roughly about 45 minutes to 90 minutes to play. And in Staterra, you are playing as one of four different factions. You could be playing the Faroons, you could be playing as the Dragons, or you could be playing as the Chompas. And uh, basically, what you're going to be doing in this game is attempting to create little characters on a board. You're going to be like building up little buildings and you're going to be completing a certain task. And there are multiple different ways to play this game. There's multiple different variants of strategy based on the number of players and how you want to set the board up. Not only are the characters asymmetric, but the board is also interchangeable between the different campaigns. All the while, the main objective for most of them is going to be to try and get the most little characters here on this scale, going back and forth, kind of like scales of judgment. The dragon characters are going to summon legates, which are like these dragon apostles. They're going to go onto the board and try and convert people to their religion, and so will the uh, Faroon as well, and then the fawns and and the Chompas are little characters that are trying to build up their uh, ranks. They're trying to kind of spread out and successfully gain dominion over the land while the gods worry about godly things. Over the course of the different games, you're having different objectives that will score you different points in different ways. And I'll explain at least one of them and how it plays. And then I'll give you an idea of how each of the characters kind of play out. And then, of course, I'll give you my review. Let's go ahead and cover the setup first, though. So for the setup, before you even begin doing anything, the first thing you should do is is look into the rule book and there are a multitude of different types of scenarios that you can play that will determine what you're going to do and how you set it up. I'm going to show you Pride and Fall of the Staterans which will give you a basic understanding of pretty much all the different setups and of course the two player variant on how you play this game. Now this is of course an asymmetric game and so in this specific scenario one god will be playing against one of the Staterran factions, one of the like kind of like people factions right? And so so what you'll do is you will first set the game board up based on how the book describes. And on this specific board here, uh, on each board I should say, is going to have numbers in the corners. And it'll be like three, four, one, two, five, six. And you'll combine them. So as you can see, these are separate and you'll put them together. Uh, these also have a front and back and you can switch them from side to side. And of course, you could even make up your own specific campaigns in this game if you would like. Once these are set up, you'll go ahead and look at the game book and see how many of the Staterans are placed and where they are placed in these certain areas of the game board as well as any locations. Then you'll select this scale here, take off all these guys, these are from previous games, uh, and you're going to place it in the middle of the game board. This will basically show you uh, who is winning in this specific game mode. Take all of the event cards and shuffle them up and then place them on the top of this scale here. The Staterran player, the Chompas in this case, are going to select two battle cards. Battle cards are going to look a little different than the normal cards. They're going to have little swords on them, and then you'll select those two and put them in with the hand of your action cards. The other battle cards you won't need for this specific game mode. As for the Dragon Faction, the Dragon Faction is only going to be getting these three cards. These three cards are called Legates. These are like uh, the gods or the kind of god apostles that come down to Earth to try and uh, recruit or uh, save individual different Staterans on the field. These are going to be represented by three different multicolored creatures, as well as the uh, Dragon character is going to be getting these. These are like basically churches or like the way to convert people. So you'll be taking these little buildings that are on the board here in some way. And when you want to convert them, you'll simply like move this little piece on them and bring the piece over to your side of the faction board. And then, of course, the last thing you'll need is your game board and this little piece here. This piece is what is called like your sanctuary token, and you're going to be using it to charge it in order to bring your saved meeples that have come to heaven, and you'll be placing them onto the scale here. In this specific game mode, you're, as the Champas, you're attempting to move your faction all the way around to the board to the very end here, and then when events happen, you'll be trying to bring them up onto the scale here. Whereas the dragons are attempting to go down to Earth with their legates, going to the location where they are supposed specifically subscribed to, like, okay, this is my side, this is your, this is the other side, which is the Faroons, and then bringing slash converting people over to their religion, and then hopefully being able to bring them 
over here onto their sanctuary board and then placing them up onto their scale, thusly tipping the game into their advantage. And that's pretty much how this specific game mode is going to work. So once you have everything set up, which is going to be two little guys here and two buildings, and as you can see everything else in its place, then you can go ahead and begin the game. Let's go ahead and describe at least these two factions before we get into my review. So the start of the game, the Chumpus is going to go first, and all you're gonna do is follow the rules printed on your game board. The first thing that happens is a new birth, and that counts for any building that is yours or converted that is yours on the field. You'll take your little Chumpas and place them down in the space uh, of where a building has been placed. After you birth any of your characters, you're going to then activate an action card. To activate action cards, you're going to need to spend people on any of your locations equal to the middle right of your card. It has a little skull symbol and a number. So in this case, if I wanted the battle chariot out of my board, it's going to cost me one. So I can spend one person, bring it back to the death zone, and I can bring out this new action. This action is an action I can play. Every turn you'll be able to put out an action card, and if you run out of spaces, you can simply cover up other action cards with other action cards. After you have chosen to activate an action, and if you do not want to, you don't have to, you then perform your actions. Actions are going to be the base two actions, which are called your default actions, and any actions that you're gonna have on these three sides. Your basic default action is going to be scout. You can move any of your champas from one location to an adjacent location that follows a road, and you can have one, two, three, as many as you want, but only to one location. Building, or builders I should say, this will allow you to construct buildings in an area where you have your champas. Your first building, is going to cost you one guy. So if I had a character here and I wanted a building, I could sacrifice this guy and bring out a building in this area, which allow me to birth more guys on the next round. If I already had a building there, the only way I could get another building is if I sacrificed two guys, and then three, and then four. Now, as you can see in most of these circles, there's only one or two buildings. So how are you gonna be able to construct three or four? Well, as the dragon player goes, they're going to be converting your buildings. They will be taking your building, sliding it over to the side, and then saying, this is now my church, as opposed to a temple, or as opposed to like, I don't know, an oil factory where your chompas do their thing. And now this is where I'm going to convert your guys. And so that can be a way where now, if I want to, the second time I, the second building in this specific whole area here, this location, I can place down another. That'll cost me two people, and then bam, three people. And if you have the uh, Faroon in play, the Faroon could then convert your buildings as well, and that's how you can get up to four buildings in a single location. So yes, in order to get a building, you're going to need to spend one, two, three, or four guys, respectively, based on the number of buildings in the area. After you have done your two uh, actions, whether it be scouting and building, or of course one of the actions that you have chosen after discarding guys from a location, then you're going to uh, play an event card. And the only way in this scenario you're going to get an event card is if you fill up all the spaces in the middle of this board here with buildings. When you do, you will draw one of these cards here. You're going to check to see how many guys you get to place out on any location on your field, follow the flavor text, and then choose one of the actions down below. Actions could involve fighting, it could involve building, it could involve birthing. These are gonna be ways to help you. And in this specific scenario, if you have any guys of the Chompas over in the very edge over here, the very far middle corner, you can summon these guys to these scales. And you can do a number based on the number on the top, uh, top right here times two. So in this case, this is a one, so you can summon two guys. So if I do get the, manage to get this event card out, I can take these guys here and place them on my side of the scale. And then this card will go to the discard pile. You can put it on the bottom of this thing here or just get rid of it for the next game. Then after you have done your actions, it's the next player's turn here. And this is going to be the dragons. The dragons board here has the same type of play. You're going to be reading this and doing as it says, training legates. So you can take one of your three guys and place them in one of the two training grounds areas. And these guys are gonna have unique abilities on them. After you have trained one of these guys, you can now use them. If you had more than one, you could use both of them. Their actions are over here. You can, so for instance, if I train one, I'll take this and place it on a board, on the board somewhere. And go, okay, I wanna go over 
here. And you're gonna place it only on your side of the location. So you'll have your side of the location, all of the likes to Terrans, and then the other side is the Faroon, right? So I'm gonna be placing my dragon character over there. It has a little cog, which is gonna represent the dragons. Uh, then I can utilize this character at that location. I can move this character, which can go up to two spaces because they're kind of godlike. Or I could go ahead and build a temple. I can basically take somebody's temple and just convert it to mine. Or somebody's building and convert it to mine. Uh, I could choose to create a believer. So if there is a Staterran here who's an atheist, basically in the middle of the location, I can bring them over to my location. So I'll, I'll go ahead and show you guys over here, make sure you guys can see it pretty well. So if I've got these guys here, I can bring this guy, these guys over here, and then they become my believers. Uh, another thing I can do is I can Believer Ascension. So with my little guy legate here, I can ascend these guys to this space over here. This is going to be attached to this location here, and this is called the Sanctuary Area. And that will let me ascend them to over here. And then I can also go ahead and uh, challenge another legate. So in a different game mode, I can fight with my godlike character against another godlike character. After that, I have dragon layer actions, which I can choose one. I can charge my sanctuary, which usually this little board here starts like this. Uh, I can move it over here like this. And the reason why I would do that is because if I want to, I can take four guys off of this location here and put them on my scales at the end of my turn if it's charged. Otherwise, I can only do two at a time. Uh, I can Temple Ascension, which means I could use my Temple, this little guy here, to ascend multiple Believers onto my board here. And then, of course, I have the Activating a Training Area. And those are pretty much what you can do in the game. Uh, training is going to allow you to uh, spend your people, your little characters, to upgrade your characters from thief to warrior to leader, or from aviator to bard to merchant, and you'll be slowly improving your legates, making them stronger in the game. Sometimes they'll get recalled because your opponents are going to basically push them back away, these godlike characters. The little chompas can find ways to do so, but that's pretty much the idea of the game. And each of the, uh, they just go back and forth. And uh, this, specific ra this specific game is going to be six rounds, so you're just going to go, okay, I'm going to go through my things. I'll birth, I'll activate an action card by placing it down, spending any of my little champas. Then I will perform up to two actions, and then I will go ahead and play an event card if I meet the specific requirements for an event card. Pass it over to me, I'll train any of my god characters, placing them on the field. I will take their actions, and I can move them, I can build a temple, I can create a believer, etc., etc. Then I would do my dragon lair actions, and then last but not least, I would ascend my guys. I could do two or four, depending on this if this is uh, if this is charged or not. And we go back and forth six rounds until this uh, scale um, is going to be checked at the last round, the last six of the six rounds. If it looked like this, it'd be this player that won. The god always wins on ties, but otherwise, whoever has the most characters in this little area here, the scales of life, the balance of life, is going to be the winner. Um, another thing to note too is so there's going to be some times where uh, the dragons are going to draw cards of the gods. And in this scenario, when a dragon character places out the little chompas onto the scale here, then you're going to be able to draw a card here. And how this functions is pretty simply the the other characters are going to be placing uh, the other characters are going to be placing out their minions actually, and then you as the god will choose an action for them to do, and they'll have to do it. So you can kind of manipulate them in a way, but this is ultimately for the other player to utilize. So that's basically the rules for one of the scenarios. There's multiple scenarios, and of course there's other characters, but uh, if you understand the champas, you understand the fawns, and if you understand the dragons. Well, the Froons are a little different, but you kind of get the idea of how the gods kind of function in these game modes. So the Statera is basically, yes, an asymmetric game, and it plays in turns. Players will do different things based on what they play as. Um, and if you're playing as one of the uh, Staterran factions, the Fawns or the Champas, they play interchangeably, right? The dragons function with their legates, and they're going to be trying to convert believers, and they're trying to take uh, the buildings and turn them into, like, sanctuaries for their god, and then they're going to try to bring them onto the ascension board and then send the uh, staterans onto their scales. While well, at the same time the Faroon have the same goal basically but they're going to get a different set of legates and they will bring them out and based on how many they bring out is how powerful they are. It'll change how and uh, how many of the different staterans they can send based on what they're trying to do and how many more legates they have the more powerful they are. Uh, but yes they have 
the two gods function a little differently, and then the human factions faction function on their own. And then the game modes function differently as well. This is an interchangeable board game with multiple different ways to play, but it keeps true to how you play the character factions in each game mode, but not necessarily what you would do with the character factions in each game mode. The event card's a nice twist as well, because it has that like choice, but you still have to allow some benefit for the human players. The humans are kind of weak, and so they have to sacrifice themselves in order to create anything or do anything. It takes a while for them to move around. And the god characters feel godlike. They just plop down and they're like, you guys are believers now. This this building here, this is our temple now. And now we're going to convert you. And the, all the Staterian characters can do is like build up their babies. They're trying to create more people before the gods can make them believers. And get to the, those locations and summon themselves up to the scales and outweigh the gods. Which always feels like a challenge. But when it comes down to it, it starts off dangerous for them. But as the game progresses and more and more units start popping up from the the humanoid factions or the atheist factions, they start to grow and become a stronger faction overall. And then the, the scales start to kind of balance out where the gods are trying to, they, they think they got the upper hand and all of a sudden they've made a bajillion babies and it's too hard to convert all these people. And so that's kind of how the twist goes in this game. The fact that there's multiple different ways of playing the game, multiple different game boards and how you change it up and uh, there's multiple different time periods. So you can play for 60 minutes or 45 minutes and choose the different numbers. Uh, there's mini expansions. All of them come with a story and it's all about these mini factions and how they're kind of working against each other, kind of working with each other, against the gods, for the gods. It has all these different twists and turns with it. I really, really enjoy asymmetric games, and this one does a pretty good job of that. Playing the two-player game, you have to be prepared for the gods to feel a little overpowered. In fact, it almost feels weighed against you. Until, as the rounds progress, you start noticing little things here and there that start improving your ch chances for success. The event cards start popping out, giving you bonuses. The actions you start playing start making more babies, and you start pulling characters all the way across the board to this area here and putting them on the stales just at the end of the time, just at the nick of time, to get that score and so it feels like that balance really takes place right at the very end so don't get discouraged. Uh, the four player game represents a really cool really fascinating asymmetric game. It's going to remind you of a game like Root uh, in which all the characters kind of function differently. Uh, some of them are slower than others or faster than others but at the very end of the game everything kind of comes together in this nice cohesive feel where everybody feels like they've got a shot and it's almost down to the very last second down to the wire type of a game. I love these games that have this unique twist and turn with them where you can kind of rotate the boards and manipulate how you want to play. You can kind of devise your own house rules with certain types of games and this one seems like it's like ripe for the picking with that. It's not just like here make your own game here's a couple of rules. No it gives you all that stuff here and you can just change a uh, tweak this or that or kind of make your own style and it just works really well. Uh, the two-player game mode it functions great and so does the four-player game mode but you have to be ready and understanding of the type of characters that are in the game and how they function so that you don't get overwhelmed or underwhelmed as the game goes, knowing that as you build and the choices you make are a huge, huge importance and that will change how you choose your actions going forward. I love the idea of somebody playing as the gods, coming down with their disciples and sucking up these atheists and bringing them onto their side. And then the other faction of gods doing the same thing. All the while the humans, just these little atheist characters, are on the board attempting to move around, attempting to make buildings and make more babies and doing what they do best, which is just reproducing, repopulating and creating a, a world out of this board here. And it feels like that's all happening all at once. The scales is a nice touch. Uh, this one doesn't work all the time. It kind of doesn't like sit well, but this whole thing is a prototype. So don't you know, don't worry about it too much. Um, in fact, all of this is a prototype, but either way, we can talk about condition of the game and quality and whatnot. The scale is really, really cool. I'm sure as long as I get the kinks out of it, it will work perfectly. I, I mean, I just, I, I think there's just some little thing. When we were playing the game and there was enough weight on it, it would move fine, but it does have like this issue. Uh, the game board, beautiful artwork. You know where everything leads to. It connects, it makes sense. Uh, there is a rule in the game that talks about you, when you move, you go from one location to a, con a connecting or joining road. Does that mean it can only be to adjacent ones or can I go all the way across here? Because it reads like you can go all the way across here. But that means you would be skipping these two locations. Um, I don't know, I'm not too certain about that. Um, the, uh, 
the little these guys here, the little gates, the the little chumpas and the little fawns, super cute little characters, easy to tell apart by the base, basically on the colors there, uh, the buildings creating these guys, feeling these guys, placing them down. It feels like you're creating kind of this little city, this little this little kind of like populous style game. Um, I really like that. I really like all the different pieces of artwork for the dragons and for the faroons. Everything looks great as far as artwork goes and the quality is there as well, even for a prototype. I'd love to see what they do with this game. It'll be on Kickstarter and you can look and tell me what you think. But overall, I think it's really well done, really cute, and it's very family friendly. So Terra is a wonderful asymmetric game. If you don't have an asymmetric game or only the one that I know of, then this is one that you can go ahead and pick up and you will greatly enjoy. I very, very much do like Satera and I'm excited to see what they come up with through the Kickstarter campaign. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Satera. If you're interested in picking up the game, there's a link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if this is more than your first video here and you think I've earned your subscription. It does greatly help us and we do greatly appreciate when you click that button. There is a live stream on Wednesday on Whatnot and on Sunday on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch where we play games just like this one. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to controlling your populations with you next time. Yeah, the dragon faction. This is, this is the cool one. Yeah.